In this video, we are gonna discuss how to avoid overtraining. What up, this is Brandon Epstein from The Jump Rope Dudes, and today I'm gonna to answer a question we get asked all the time in the YouTube comments and Instagram direct messages and just across our channel in general, and that is how do I avoid overtraining? Now overtraining is a really scary thing for people because most people don't understand how you get overtrained, so they don't know how to avoid it. So hopefully I'm gonna answer some of those questions in that video and give you clarity about what you need to do and what you need to not do to make sure you don't get overtrained. First off, what is overtraining? What does that even mean? Overtraining occurs when the volume and intensity of the exercise exceeds an individual's recovery capacity. They cease making progress and can even begin to lose strength and fitness. In other words, everything bad happens. You may gain excess body fat, uh, you just don't feel good, you may lose muscle mass, so everything you're trying to do positively with your fitness, when you get overtrained, you're going the opposite direction. So how does this happen? Well, essentially, I'm gonna get into some more of the details in a second, but on the hormonal level, your body is releasing these hormones like cortisol and alpha amylase, these different stress hormones. And when these stress hormones are released in excess, your body starts to perform inoptimally. In other words, your body starts doing things you don't want it to do, like it starts to make you feel stressed out. You start to feel overwhelmed. Uh, hormonally, there's physical changes that happen in your body where these hormones are triggering excess body fat to store and also it's causing your muscles to be eaten by your body. Catabolism. So this is a very primal reaction to your body. Think about if you're a dude 10,000 years ago or a dudette and you're walking across the terrain and all of a sudden uh, you see a tiger and it starts to chase you. Well, of course, all these hormones, all these stress hormones are gonna to start to be released and it's gonna drive all the glucose into your muscle and it's gonna to start to store away body fat so your body isn't focusing on uh, digesting your food. Instead, it's focuses on uh, storing it away in case like you can't eat for an extended period of time and make sure that you can try to use all the energy as fast as possible like glucose. And if you don't use energy, of course, it's gonna be stored away as fat. So we wanna get you out of this mindset of running from a lion in the Sahara and get you feeling more in touch with the reality because I'm sure your every day is pretty safe and so we want your body reacting that way. So I'm gonna take you through a checklist right now of different things that you wanna cover in your personal life to make sure you avoid getting overtrained. Number one, sleep. You need to figure out what the right amount of sleep is for your body personally. If you're not sleeping enough, your body's gonna get stressed, all these stress hormones are gonna be released, and you may end up getting so stressed to a point that you start to you know, put on some excess body fat even though you're not eating in excess and you also may start to lose some muscle mass. So get enough sleep and the only way you're gonna figure out how much sleep is right for you is by testing it yourself. You have to wake up at, and after tracking as much sleep as you had and just see how you feel on a consistent basis. Take like a week snapshot and see how you feel every day. You know, maybe track your energy from one to 10 when you wake up and track what, how that correlates with the amount of sleep that you have. Now, a lot of research shows that there's not a perfect amount of sleep, but most people need around six to eight hours. But if you need a little bit more than that, that's cool too, of course. Listen to your body. Number two is learning to manage your stress better. Of course you're gonna get stressed. Stress is just a normal part of life. So don't try to just say, I'm never gonna be stressed. Instead, try to manage your stress more efficiently. Meaning, you're not doing negative behavior when you're getting stressed by numbing the stress or the negative feelings with alcohol, excess drugs, overeating, uh, just abusive behavior to your body that makes you maybe forget about the stress, but makes you feel worse in the long run. So instead, do more positive things like practice meditation. Meditation can be great for helping you get back to the present moment and relieving some of that stress, making you feel good and whole right now. In addition, try reading more. Get a book around personal development to help you work on just building more positive habits in your life and a more positive mindset. Try to find books that will build you up and read these in times of stress. And then of course, you know, try to spend time with positive people. Just create a positive life. It's gonna help you manage your stress better. Next up, exercise. 
exercise. Yes, you do want to exercise, but not obsessively. So in the next part, I'm going to talk about what not obsessively looks like, but I would say in general, five to seven times a week, doing workouts like we have on this YouTube channel, 30 to 40 minutes are going to be great. Jump rope, body weight workouts are going to be awesome for your body to help you relieve stress, but you're not overdoing it to a point where you're going to get your body overly stressed and over trained. So something you want to think about as well in regards to your training is making sure that you're not just dumping too much of a load on your body, right? If you're a professional athlete, your main focus is training your body. If you're not a professional athlete and you're just a normal person that's, you know, living your life and working, going to work every day, then you don't have to be training four hours a day. And if you do try to do that along with whatever other stresses, you know, work you have in your life, you probably will get overtrained. So don't be weightlifting five to seven times a week. If you're gonna do weights, try to do it three, maybe four times a week. And again, don't pour it on to a point where you're abusing your body. Just get your body what it needs and move on with your life. So next point, number four, is to take a day off. Whenever you need a day off, take it. Now that's not to say if, you know, whenever you're just not feeling good or feeling lazy, you take a day off. No, this means you're getting more of a relationship with your body where you're really listening to your body and what it needs and you're taking a day off when you need to. So that means, you know, sometimes just saying, you know what, today uh, my body is feeling overtrained. I've had so many stresses in my life. I'm gonna take a day off from training and maybe I'm just gonna go for a walk outside. Maybe I'm gonna listen to a podcast and go for a walk. Maybe I'm gonna go into nature and go for a hike. And I would definitely say even designate at least one day a week where you're doing no training at all and you're just focusing on recovery. Uh, specifically for me, I try to make that day Sunday where I'm not training at all. I'm doing a little active recovery if I need to, but you know, I try to go for hikes. I try to meditate. Maybe I do a little bit of light yoga, but I'm not doing anything to push my body really hard because that one day is very important for recovery. Point number five, eat good food and eat the right amount of it. So a lot of people under eat and their body gets overly stressed because when you under eat, when you're not eating enough food, your body says, okay, I don't know when I'm gonna get my next meal. And so it starts to store body fat because it's confused. It doesn't know that you're gonna feed it later on. It doesn't know you have unlimited access to grocery stores. It's still thinking, you know, back in the Sahara 10,000 years ago, where it doesn't have any idea when your next meal is gonna come. So eat the right amount of food. We put our calculator in the description below. You can check that out. And if you want ideas about more nutrient dense foods to eat and how to calculate the right amount of calories. We'll also link up our nutrition system, which can be very helpful with that as well. Moral of the story, eat the right amount of food, eat nutrient dense foods, try to eat 70% whole foods in your diet. Because of course you're putting a bunch of toxins in your body, a lot of preservatives, all that stuff. Your body's going to get more stress. Try to eat from the earth as much as you can. Point number six, the final point is just listen to your body. Get in touch with intuition. You have a very, very complex and sophisticated operating system between your ears, and it has a very good relationship with your body. So what I want you to do is, when you're wondering to yourself, you know what, I'm not feeling good. Should I take the day off? Like, just sit in meditation and count your breaths, like breath one through 10, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and ask yourself, what's it like to be me right now? And just listen for a response. Intuitively, try to get in touch with their body and understand what your body needs. Because when you have that relationship built, you always know when to take a day off and when to train. And this is only something you build over time. And the only way you build it is by training hard on your days that you've scheduled and then really working to figure out when your best active recovery days should be. So these are the best tips on avoiding overtraining. Hopefully they were helpful. If they were awesome, let us know in the comments below. If you have more questions, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're gonna keep making videos like this to help you get lean and just live more. That's what it's all about, guys. So check out the other videos on the screen. Subscribe, do the thing.